Welcome back to Awful Movie Reviews. Oh, quiet, you fool. If there's one thing I've learned from starting this YouTube channel, it's that reviewing bad movies never stops. Not me. There's no rest for me. There's always something terrible lurking on the internet and just waiting for me to tear it apart. You're always ready to think the worst. I'm going with How to Make a Monster, a movie that surprisingly has some interesting elements to it. And if I may say so in all due modesty, I re But unfortunately it was dealt with the wrong way and ends up being a disappointing picture. But just before we get going, if there's a bad movie you'd like me to review, just leave me a comment down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to never miss out on another bad movie review every Friday and cult horror movie review every Tuesday. It's in your best interests. Do exactly as I instruct you. How to Make a Monster is best remembered for its use of notable props from other 1950s horror B-movies that came out during the time. We can recognize the werewolf from I Was a Teenage Werewolf or the weird looking Frankenstein from I Was a Teenage Frankenstein, both of which are worthy of being flushed down the toilet. Sure looks like it. But that's not it. In the final scenes, the masks of many different B-movie monsters are also visible. We can see the alien from It Conquered the World, the monster from The She-Creature, and the goofy-looking green extraterrestrial from Invasion of the Saucer Men. Well, at least we look normal, <laughs> don't we, though? In fact, at the beginning, a group of tourists visiting the studio are told that they're gonna see the sets for Horrors of the Black Museum, which is very inventive, I find, because that would be the next movie to be produced and released a year later by the exact same producer. Robert H. Harris plays a makeup artist who sadly finds out that the film studio is letting him go after this final picture. So in order to exact revenge on those who made that decision, he concocts some homemade blend of makeup which takes away a person's will or inhibition to do or remember anything. He applies the makeup onto the actors and then uses them to kill those he wanted to get revenge on. I found the concept to be original and pretty inventive, but like I said, the way the makers went about it was hit and miss to say the least. I don't consider it scary enough to be a good horror film, there isn't any mystery or any suspense, and while the script does try to make the audience chuckle from time to time, the movie takes itself way too seriously. I wonder if it could have worked better as a full-on comedy, or as a spoof, or something like that, at least a film that is totally self-aware. Now look. I didn't come here to discuss this thing or to argue it with you. In fact, quality-wise, it's one of the best bad movies that I've reviewed. It doesn't have that same appalling feel to it when you're watching it. But is that really saying very much? No. No, it's not. We're from Oakmount High. We're the editors of our school paper. Well, first or last, I'm gonna do my best. That's a big opportunity for me. Thank you very much. Wow, this guy really told the story of a lifetime. One interesting notion surrounding the release of this movie is that the one and only Edward D. Wood Jr., yes, the grandmaster of awful movies himself, accused the producer, Sam Arkoff, of stealing the idea that he allegedly came up with. According to his widow, Ed Wood presented a script to American International Pictures that was very similar to the movie's story. Wood claims that they stole the original idea and changed things up a bit. Now this makes no sense. Is it true? I don't know, but one thing's for sure is that if Ed Wood ever got his hands on this material, I personally think that it would have turned out to be a million times worse than it did. So in a way, it's good that he didn't get to direct it. Also, do you guys want to know what happens when the production can't afford to shoot the film in color? Well, the movie decides to go Wizard of Oz on us and just make the last 10 minutes in Technicolor while the rest is in black and white. I'm guessing that they would attract the crowds with that. It's actually a fancy idea, but it would have maybe been better if this was done on an actually good movie. Bottom note, I didn't like How to Make a Monster. It's a very silly film, but not in a good way. In the end, I think it leaves a lot, and I mean a lot, to be desired. What an awful movie. Old friend. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.